All right, problem 21 off the GRE subject math practice test. Uh, evaluate this integral. Uh, red flag perhaps going up here. A couple things that might cause a red flag to go up. Note that the bounds of integration here, um, one is the negative of the other one. And then the other red flag is, wow, that looks like a mess. That looks like it'd be really, really hard. I wonder if there's some sort of trick, some sort of shortcut. In fact, there is. Uh, if, well, if you look at each different part over here, this one plus t squared, the square root of that, Maybe you'll note that this is an even function. Uh, what it means to be an even function is that the height of this function at any value x is the exact same as the height of that function at the negative of that value x. Uh, and the same thing happens for cosine. Uh, so because cosine is even, cosine to the third power is also even. And you can kind of get that out of the graph of cosine or by arguing this, that the cosine of, I don't know, pi over 4 is the same as the cosine of negative pi over 4. Uh, not true for sine, and therefore for sine to the third power. But something similar is going on here uh, for sine, and maybe I'll color code these a little bit. It's an odd function. And what it means for a function to be odd is that the height at a given value is the negative of the height at the negative of that x coordinate. So they're almost the same heights at f of x and f of negative x. It's just one is the negative of the other guy. Oh, kind of like a sine graph? Yeah, exactly. Sine to the third. Sine is an odd function, therefore sine to the third power is also an odd function. Uh, and as I think I already mentioned, cosine is an even function here. And so a nice thing happens. Um, the product of an even function and an odd function, it'll turn out as an odd function. Uh, I don't know if you have that memorized, it's kind of annoying that the product of an even number and an odd number is not an odd number, it's an even number, but the product of an even function and an odd function is in fact an odd function. And the way you can convince yourself of that is think about what height maybe this thing would take on at a given x value, okay, I have some number in my head, and then think about what, val what height this thing would take on at the negative of that x value. Well, this part would be the exact same this part would almost be the exact same, it would just be the negative of it. So I have the same numbers all around, it's just I have this one negative floating around here. What that's saying is that I'll end up with an odd function here. The product of one odd and as many even functions as you want is itself an odd function. So if this whole thing is an odd function right here, a nice thing happens when you figure out the integral from when your bounds of integration are evenly distributed about zero. So all the area that I'm gonna get on from zero to pi over four is gonna exactly cancel out with the area from negative pi over four to zero. What I'm saying is this entire thing will go to zero. When I'm evaluating this integral, I can say it's the integral from negative pi over four to pi over four of cosine of t. Let's break this up into steps plus. This has nothing to do with it being an odd or even function. This is something you can always do. The integral of the sum is the sum of the integrals of all of this stuff, I guess I'll write it again, one plus t squared sine cubed t cosine cubed t, and then I forgot my dt's in here. Um, but because this right here is an odd function, this integral equals zero. So really this is just equal to the integral from negative pi over four to pi over four of cosine of t dt, plus zero if you feel like it. Um, so to evaluate this integral, well, I guess maybe I'm showing off here. You can take advantage of the fact that this is even. So the area from zero, negative power four to zero is the same as the area from zero to pi over four. So I could say this is twice the integral from zero to pi over four of cosine of t dt. And so that's two times uh, the antiderivative of cosine of t is sine of t. And I want to evaluate that from zero to pi over four. Uh, the sine of pi over 4 is root 2 over 2. So I get that my uh, answer is just the square root of 2, which there it is, answer B here. So could you evaluate this integral? I don't know, maybe you could. I didn't really look at it. It would probably be a whole lot of work and take you longer than you'd want to spend when time is such a precious commodity on these tests. So really, I imagine what the writers of this test were going for is having you recognize even and odd functions here.